lack of order. Just touch the plug there. It will remove it for the light to go out. So, so instead of what is otherwise easier for you to do. Okay. A lack of order in anything equals chaos, mismanagement, and confusion. And that's what we saw in that place. They were trying to bring order, but it was doing the lack of order. So if we saw chaos, mismanagement, and confusion, a lot of confusion was there. Put the thing there, man. Make sure they forget this thing now. Another lesson. God never... God did not pass by chaos and disorderliness. He never passed by chaos. He is privileged. The leadership really proof. God never passed, pass, never passed by chaos and disorderliness. We should, we should not too, because whatever we neglect becomes chaotic. So what is he talking about? You remember Genesis chapter one. God saw. Can we see Genesis chapter one? Uh, it's not here. Okay, in the beginning, you see Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God saw that there was darkness without form. There was chaos. He never neglected it. He never passed it by. God doesn't pass by chaos. That should tell us something about ourselves. We shouldn't too. If God is not passing by chaos, if God is not passing by uh confusion, chaos, and, but response to them. We too must always respond to chaos. So, but how do we respond? What is the first response to chaos? One, light. The, number one, yeah, the, that's a greater light, inner light. That light, light in general. But there are two forms of light. Huh? Yes, great, two forms of light. The greater light and the smaller light. Which is the greater light? The inner light. The smaller light. Outward, illumin outward light. Yeah. Illumination. Okay. Now, so when we want to address a situation, a chaotic situation, and we don't want to pass it by, we don't rush for action. Action must only come after the inner light has given us an idea. And what is inner light? Inner light is knowledge. Understanding, illumination, wisdom. Only through, after going to get more wisdom, more knowledge, more understanding, and that understanding and knowledge that we have accumulated helps us to paint a picture of how to deal with the situation. Only after we now have a clear picture, we can act. Action is not, is not advised, advisable. Action is not advisable without a, a clear picture, without the clarity of a picture. Actions are only allowed when there is clarity of mental clarity or picture of what to, or picture of what to do. Then action. Don't always rush to resolve a problem. Always get your plans together. When Jesus was saying, who wants to build a tower? If you will not first of all sit down. Why is he sitting down? To get a picture. Like architectural drawing, sketches. You want to build a tower? Don't rush to build, begin to build. That is not the priority. Priority is mental picture, inner light that allows you to see what you want to build. He said, well, he "Won't he first sit down, calculate, and count? Does he have enough? Does he have everything it takes to finish it so that he doesn't begin to build and then doesn't finish it?" And what makes people to begin to build that don't finish? Because they didn't calculate. They are trying to believe that, oh, by God's grace, something will happen. God will help. Miracle will happen. But that is a sign of lack of order. Order demands that you make calculations from beginning to the end. Because God is Alpha and Omega before you begin to start out. Who wants to go against another gov government, um, another army in war? If he will not first sit down too. Why is he sitting down? He's making calculation. Why, what is calculation? Making mental picture. Developing mental picture. And then after you see the picture, you don't even begin to go and walk. You sit down. 
Write it down. Put it in calculation. Calculate steps. Consider every possible variables. Before you, after everything, you are sure everything is considered, then you could begin to act. So let's read that again. Another lesson, God, ne God never passed by chaos and disorderliness. We should not do because whatever we neglect becomes chaotic. Whatever you neglect becomes worse. Yeah, it becomes worse. Whatever you neglect becomes worse. Whatever we neglect, anytime you neglect disorder, it becomes worse. Anytime you neglect darkness or chaos or disorderliness, it gets worse. So the best response to disorderliness is, action, is, uh, is res to respond through light, to respond through action. And the first action, of course, is light, education, understanding, and then picture, and then, you know, questioning, critical thinking, put everything in place, and then physical action. Okay? Not to, not to neglect means maintenance, bringing clarity, new knowledge, improvement. Okay. So this is all in the area of, ma ma uh, man uh, in a, in a, so we are talking about maintenance. So if I see chaos, People are always talking about maintenance culture in Nigeria. We don't have maintenance culture. The reason we don't have maintenance culture is because we don't have this thing in the mind. It doesn't start in the inner, inner light. Maintenance. You want to bring maintenance. How do you bring maintenance if you don't have clarity in your mind? Clarity is the picture, clear picture. How does that clear picture come? Through knowledge. Then the action that you take brings about improvement. Or otherwise, or otherwise, you have to do what the world is doing. And what is the world system doing? The world system, what it does is, I am the boss, or I'm the director. I know that I need maintenance in this uh, business. I go and employ graduates who don't know anything, who don't understand what I, I'm after. I give them instruction, or what do you call it? Business instruction, not what do you call it? Work instruction, what is it? Job description. I give them job description. Okay, go, come, go, come, go, come. I just create Uncle Sam for them. That's another way you can do it. So you employ people to do it for you. You are paying them for it. But they don't see the big picture. You are the one who sees the big picture. You are telling them, do this, do this. You, you this is another way of employing slaves for yourself. You get some slaves to, to make you keep order, maintenance. That's what they, they do in stores and hostels. Uh, uh, hotels and you have maintenance staff. They are maintaining everything for you, but you know what you need. You are the one in charge. At least you need to know what you need. So nevertheless, we still need to know this whole process. Yes. We must stop. If we if, stop. If we must stop working. If we stop working. Okay, if we stop working and improving something, it loses order and becomes chaotic. That is exactly what we are talking about. Anything we stop improving, anything we stop pushing to be, make better, like I was talking about Lagos the other day. Compare Lagos to London. Lagos is a new town compared to London or in Europe. These are very new towns. But go to London, you would think that it's very new. But Lagos, you would think that it's ancient, ancient, ancient. Because of lack of order. Any house that is built in the UK or even in Ukraine here, it could be 200 years old house. But when you go to, when you go to, the, to Nigeria, a house that was just built 10 years ago is already like 2,000 years old house. Because if you don't constantly improve to put order, constantly maintain order, it falls apart automatically. It disintegrates automatically. Whenever we stop improving on something, whenever we stop working on something to improve something, it, it automatically, since, no, gradually loses order and becomes chaotic. Okay? Without light and order, you can get used to chaos and darkness, especially... That is exactly what we are experiencing in Africa. People got used to the absence of light, 
I'm not talking of electricity. You all know what we're talking about. Inner light. And then people don't even have an idea of order. As a result, the country is falling apart. Chaos everywhere. And the people get used to chaos. They get you to darkness. I'm not talking of physical darkness. I'm talking of confusion. Especially if you don't question and challenge everything around you. To bring order, you must always challenge. Order is based on challenging everything. Let's see this video. Now, I want to show you the video of America. That America we see today didn't just come from nothing. It started by the country picturing through light, the inner light, what kind of society they want to build. And the kind of society they want to build, they had it in their mind. They had an idea of the kind of society they want to build in their mind. And they know that the society is falling apart, especially after the Great Depression. And that what they have on their hand is, is going to lead them to a chaotic society. So in the 50s, they started Hollywood. And the purpose of Hollywood was to educate the society and make Hollywood produce films that will communicate manners, value system, and educate the whole nation in the kind of virtuous nation and people they want, to, they want to get as a result. And that is one of the films that they used to create. That yesterday, was it yesterday, I showed you a film on how they taught people the whole country responsibility. I showed you another one on how, to, how they taught the whole country on groom, grooming, you know, uh, uh, and hygiene, yeah. We spoke about, yeah, education. So this, this is a whole country. It has to be intentional. Focus, intentional action. So to make Nigeria come out of chaos and confusion, it has to be an intentional thing. We have to come up with the value system, and I've come up with them already. I have a list of the value system that we need to develop in our people. So we need to involve the film industry the educational, uh, educational sector, we need to inform every sphere, religious sector. There are, place, uh, there are institutions in the society that are responsible for the values of the society. So we need to invo inv involve all of them and give them the direction on the value formation process. And this is the example of it here. Let's put on the film, please. Restaurant in public, how to dress, how to behave. This is in America that they are talking about freedom. But they know that they needed something. They needed to cultivate some values, some basic value system. But in Africa, we, do, we are not working on that. We don't even know we are supposed to do it. Our past, our government people are just talking about some stuff that you, don't, you cannot even relate to life. Okay, make it louder. A well-mannered group, I think. You notice their good manners right away. Good manners make good first impressions. And because your manners are showing all the time, they have a lot to do with how well people like you. We've noticed Jack's manners because, well, they seem easy and natural. Of course, he does have a special reason for good manners right now. But good manners are comfortable and natural and easy for him now because they're with him all day. All day? Well, let's see. Morning, everybody. Morning, Jack. Morning. Morning, Jack. Hi. Morning, dear. See? A cheerful good morning is a good way to start the day. Good manners will help toward a pleasant, happy day. And home is a good place to practice them. You see, even in home, how to behave in your home, you are taught. Some eggs, Dad? Thanks. May I have some toast, please? Thank you. May I? Please? Thank you. These are words of respect. Words that make day-to-day -day living go smoothly. Oh, Jack, do you think I could borrow that portable radio of yours for the picnic tomorrow? 
Please? Asking to borrow things politely, not demanding them. And sharing things when you can are more signs of good manners. It's about time to get out the storm windows and check them over. How about tonight, Jack? Gee, I'm sorry, Dad. I have a date tonight. Would tomorrow be all right? Sure. Just make sure. Yes, even when you have to go against another's wishes, you can do it agreeably. Being agreeable, saying and doing things in a pleasant way, that's easy enough. And it does make a difference all day long. Ready? Yeah, just a second, I'll put my jacket on here. Oh, excuse me, I'll get it. Excuse me, Jack's good manners are showing again. Jack Connor speaking. It's helpful to give your name when you answer. Well, Mr. Moore, I'm, I'm sorry. My father just left for the plant a few minutes ago. May I take a message? Ask him to call me when he comes in tonight. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. I'll tell him. All right, sir. Goodbye. You can be direct and brief on the phone, say what you have to say, and then stop. For on the phone, too, your manners are showing. Ready to go? Ready for you. We're going, Mom. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Jack. Bye, sis. See you after school. Right. When Jack leaves the house with a lady, it's ladies first. Yes, even with his sister. For on the street, as much as at home, your manners are showing. Check the sound with the Facebook. It's a simple enough matter to give people you meet plenty of room to pass. Good manners again, and they put you in a good light. Hi. Well, hi, Mary. Hi. Good morning. How are you? We've missed you. I'm fine now. No more tonsils. Oh, that's right. You had them out. A cheerful greeting for friends you meet. An inquiry about their welfare. And everyone feels more at ease. That's what good manners do. <laughs> they make everyone feel at ease. What about manners when the bus comes? That's right, of course. Ladies first, and no shoving or pushing. <laughs> Inside the bus, you can enjoy the ride and let others enjoy it. Or you can, well, look around. Perhaps the less said about this kind of manners, the better. And this kind. Your manners are showing and it's good manners that make a good impression. Now, about getting off the bus. Should Jack get off first? Yes, he can give the ladies a hand. And girls, let the men help. They enjoy it. And no loafing around. Being on time is good manners, too. Are your manners showing when you're in class? Let's see. There's Jack giving the teacher his best attention. Good manners again. Now, in order to understand Anglo-Saxon England, we must go back many, many years. Betty, did I tell you the latest mm, gentleman? This kind of manner yeah, shows, too. It's one way to impress the teacher. All right, we'll continue our discussion now. We're talking about Queen Elizabeth and the coronation. All right, class dismissed. Hey, right. Say, I notice you're new in class. I'm Jack Connors. Hi, Jack. My name is Fred Johnson. Fred to know you. All right, Fred. See, I thought we might walk around the school here. And I could... Introducing yourself to a new classmate is good manners and easy. Yeah? Say, have you seen the new school paper? No. Well, here, you can borrow mine. My sister has one I can use. An offer of help, willingness to share, and your good manners help make friends for you. Walking slowly, keeping to the right, 
more good manners. You've got some nice pictures in there. <laughs> oh, I'll get them. Can I give you a hand? No, that's all right. She'll remember good manners, and that makes Jack rate high with her. We never had anything like this at our old school. After school, when it's time for fun, when it's so easy to forget about manners, what about then? Yes, your <laughs> manners are showing then, too. What are good manners when you're driving? Obeying all the traffic laws, yes, but more than that. You can wait for someone to get across the street, even if you do have the right of way. You can drive as quietly as possible. No hanging on the horn or loose mufflers. <laughs> there are good manners for driving, aren't there? Your manners show in the things you do, in the clothes you wear. Sis, you're not going yet, are you? Mm, pretty soon, Jack. Married you any minute now. Well, here's the portable you. Pardon me, sis, but you aren't... Do you think you should go to a picnic dressed like that? Picnic? Oh, the picnic's tomorrow. Oh, I guess I misunderstood you this morning. I'll put the radio in your room. Thanks. Oh, Jack, I am going to a concert tonight. Do you think I look all right? For a concert? Terrific. Wait a second. Yes, <laughs> your manners are showing all day long. You may not know it. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. So the whole idea is, <laughs> the, the whole idea I'm communicating is that order doesn't come by accident. Any order you see in Europe today is because it was informed, intentional. Somebody created it. If you see order in the street, it's not by accident. It didn't come from everyone. Even the white people, they are chaotic by nature too. Somebody taught them. It's about training. So if you want to have a develop a civilized society, I'm just showing you for you to know how Europe, America was pr produced. Some of us just come now and we're just enjoying what we see. But somebody taught someone. Somebody had the picture. Somebody walked through the value system, produced the value system, and then put a system in place for it to be propagated and established. Can you put on that light? I want to invite uh, Noojo uh, to confirm to you that uh, do you, you are the only few, one of the few ones that, are, that is aware, mm. I think we can close that, of the fact that uh, I have already worked on the value system for Nigeria. But people don't know that that is already ready. And even how to Desipate it across the country, yeah. You can, uh, incorporate it in the whole society. It's already there. But I'm showing these people now so that they will understand that, you know, it's not just enough for me to know. It's good for them to know that this is how we create new societies. And when I'm talking about Nigeria with so much confidence, it's because I know what I'm doing. This is not economy. You, you know, I'm not talking about economy yet. I'm still going to talk about economy. This is just about civilization and development. Tell them about the value system that you have seen. Which you have seen them. You have seen them in the, in the book that I, I, I wrote. And you can tell them about the book. And then you have seen them. I sent you personally. So what, what, what is your hope now for Nigeria? Well, um, let me first start by talking about the book. The book is um, how to uh, discover the purpose and calling of nations. And um, what pastor it's did... It's on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon right now. And I, I advise everyone... Just came out last week. Yeah. Any, everyone from every nation actually needs to get that book. How was it called? How to Discover the Purpose and, and Calling, calling of, of Nations. Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations. Discovering. Yeah. Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations. And um, what pastor did in that book was um, he, he really made it so clear and obvious that nations are intentional and um, there is no nation that was just birthed out of chaos that god had a purpose for every nation now fast forward um 
he got to the, the place where um, he explained how it is very important for the national values to be inculcated and to be engraved in the consciousness of every citizen of every nation. And um, taking Nigeria as a, as a case study, a um, pastor brought out Купуйте смартфоны в магазинах Київ Старта на Shop Київ Star UA. Повертаємо на рахунок 20. Get to Ukraine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, Pastor enumerated 20 key values um, that he derived from the from different things in the nation, and I don't know if I have to go into the wow. details. Yeah. And um, for example, one of those um, key values that Pastor also talks about every time is, for example, the, that of work. Um, work is one, key, is one value system that in every nation that would actually be civilized and be developed, work is one value that we can't do, do without. Another is love. Um, another one is brotherhood. Another one is the dignity of labor. And all of these values in, in, in the book, Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations, Pastor talks about how these values can be engraved different ways, and he keeps mentioning it, if you, if you are very observant, um, engraving the, the values through the family. Like, for example, this video that we watched, how um, there, these things are thoughts, how people can actually engrave these values, not just outside, but even in their families, in religious institutions, with NGOs and several bodies. And all of these values actually they can be engraved, but it has to be done systematically and it has to be done intentionally. And for me, because I want to devote my life in working so hard to make sure that the right value systems are engraved in every citizen in Nigeria. And for me, I can see, I can see it very clearly. For example, let's look at this video. You know, um, everyone understands how to be a gentleman, meaning as a gentleman, you have to open, I mean, you have to open the door for the lady, you have to uh, also, like, let's, let's take, for example, you, you're getting into a new place, or get about to enter a building, you should be the one opening the door as a guy, uh, and also maybe you're, you're about to sit down, and pastor always makes this, like, let's say in, in a room uh, where there, there are no seats, and then a lady comes in. Now, a typical Nigerian man would, would sit down and even spread his legs, or even like look, sit down very relaxed. But then a value system, a good culture is that as a, as a man, when a lady comes in, you should stand up and give her a, a seat. And or for example, what, like what we saw in the, in the video, um, you are in the, you're in the bus. The bus is a public place and there should be no chaos. There should be no um, disorderliness. But for example, in Nigeria, when you're in the bus, you can't even have peace because this person is chatting with another person, another person is, is picking the call, another person is shouting, and there is just chaos in the public transport. But here we saw in that video that when you are in the bus, it is good manners for you to allow everyone to have a good journey, just the same way you want to have peace. So these things, as, as simple as they may look like, actually, are the things that made nations develop. Uh, for example, in America, or let's not go to America, in Ukraine here, um, when you enter into the bus, it is, it is written, you will see it inside the bus, that make sure you stand up for elderly people. You see it written in the bus, that whosoever you are, if you see an elderly person, stand up. Give her a seat. If you see someone who is disabled, stand up, give her a seat. So, and, you, and it's even announced. For example, you enter the, tra the, tra the, the, the trolley buses, you hear it announced every time that please, if you see any old person standing nearby, make sure you stand up and let them sit. Or if you see um, someone who is disabled, stand up and let them sit. And that, has, that becomes a, a value system in the minds of those people that anytime they get into the bus and they, they, they sit down, they see a free seat and then an elderly person comes in or a lady comes in or a disabled person comes in, it is already, by default, they already know that, hey, I have to stand up for this person to come in. And if this actually becomes our norm in Nigeria, 
then we can be very sure that Nigeria will be developed. We can be what very is, sure. Yes, what is your hope after those that book, after reading that book, connected with Nigeria, and what is your hope and plan? My personal hope. Well, my hope and what I can envision and what I'm actually incubating on, because I, like I told Pastor that I really, I'm, what I'm doing right now is that I want to really incubate how to, um, how to make this actually work in Nigeria. But what I can picture thus far is that it is very possible for Nigeria to become a civilized nation and a developed nation. And how can this be? And what am I seeing? I'm seeing ways in which from childhood, I mean from when you're just going to primary school, elementary school, these things are taught strategically and then they are reinforced in every, in any way, ev everywhere you go to. For example, you're taught in school how to, be, to, how to have manners and how to develop good manners. And then you get home, you, you switch on the television, you're seeing the same thing there. Everywhere you go to church, you're hearing the same thing there. You get home, your parents are talking to you, you're hearing the same thing there. So for me, it, it gives me so much hope that Nigeria actually can be developed. And this done strategically, and this done with, with um, an informed plan, it's very, it's very, very, very possible for Nigeria to be developed. You know, Pastor mentioned in his book how Nigeria can, um, not how Nigeria can, be, can become the greatest country in the world. For me, with applying this principle of law and order, it is very possible for Nigeria to be a developed nation because all of the developed nations that we have, like Japan, Singapore, um, America, Germany, all of these developed nations, we can see that they, they didn't just become developed all of a sudden or ma with, with magic. They got developed because these things were, I mean, these value systems, this order was established and that was, that was exactly what led them to be developed. So I'm very hopeful for Nigeria and I know, and I know that by God's grace and even as we begin to work these things out, we can be very sure that Nigeria will be developed and will be civilized. Because these People are the are things. Asking, where can they find those 20 value systems? They are in the books. They are enumerated in the book. Um, let, me, let me repeat the book. The, the title of the book is Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations. Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations. And in that book, Pastor listed 20 key values, key national values uh, that could actually lead to the, um, the civilization and the development of Nigeria. So get that book from Amazon. It's, it, when you begin to read it, you understand. I personally called it the nation's Bible because it is so detailed and it will give a clear and vivid picture of what it means to actually live, um, a, 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 or to have a developed nation and a civilized one. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, we'll stop at this. We'll take a uh, 20 minutes break and come back at nine o'clock our time in 20 minutes. We we'll come back in 20 minutes to continue. All right, go and take some fresh air and uh, some cookies, some coffee, and we'll come back in 20 minutes' time. Thank you. Thank you.